Hello friends and welcome to my channel for another video. Today we're going to do an overview of my custom Dark Knight trilogy display. Uh, now you've probably seen this on the channel before, I've shown it a few times. I actually built this diorama on the channel. But since reviewing this Felix Toys, the clown figure, aka Ledger's Joker, I've had a lot of requests to break down the different figures and a lot of questions about what they are, how I made them, etc. And the Batman has gotten some love on Instagram from a couple accounts as they try to make their own and actually improve upon what I did. So I wanted to go ahead and do a little breakdown of what's what and talk to you about what's in this display. So let's get to it. All right, so here's a look at my custom Dark Knight display. And as I mentioned, I've had a lot of questions about these since posting my review of this Felix Toys Joker. People have been asking me, oh, what, how'd you make that one? What's, what are the parts from this one and whatnot? So I decided that I should do a video on this just to kind of break down what each figure is and give everyone an idea of how I made them in case you want to make your own. So we're going to go row by row here. And I'm sure as I get to the back, I'm going to start knocking stuff over. So here we go. Okay, so first we have Bruce here. This is on a, I believe like a Joker Mezco body. I think a knockoff Joker body. Yes. So I got a knockoff Mezco Joker from AliExpress a long time ago because I was going to reverse engineer the pattern on the suit because I was going to make suits for these things once upon a time and uh, never ended up doing that, but I had the body. The head is from Manipal Studios. I don't know who Manipal is, how they make this stuff, but I do know that they look like tiny little hot toys and they're incredibly well done. Many people in the community have stuff from Manipal. I've got a, this, their John Wick, two of their Henry Cavill Superman heads in different scales. This is the one for like SHF Mafex scale. So it is a little small for this, but I have put it, you know, on a body that is on the slenderer side. And then I've kind of fudged the tailoring in a way to make it look like it scales. Uh, what I did for this, the, the suit is from GPS lot. It's pants, a jacket. I believe it came with a white shirt and then this tie. So what I did was I took the suit and I've actually kind of used some double stick tape to hold it in place in a couple areas. Reason being these things can get really puffy and they don't, you know, that's one of the problems with clothing at this scale. So I kind of taped it in certain areas just to make it look like it should. Like I taped the lapels down to the shoulder here so it didn't puff out. The vest is actually, it's not really a vest. It was from, I had like a Toy Biz Marvel Legends Lord of the Rings I think it was an Aragorn or something and he had like a skirt deal or like some kind of one of the characters had like kind of a, a soft goods kind of like skirt thing I took that material and made a vest out of it the shirt is also from GPS lot but it's from a different clothing set this is from like a Loki TVA outfit from the TV show that they made so you know I didn't want it to just be like a white shirt because I think he did have a blue shirt on in the movie uh, Manipal would later go on to make an actual like full-on version of Bruce Wayne like this including that head but I had already made this one and I didn't want to drop another like $90 on something I essentially already had. Um, granted, theirs is much better, but you know, I'm always kind of like, does it satisfy the need in my display and am I happy with it? And if the answer is yes, then that's what I rock with. So, oh, and the shoes, I think these are maybe Noda shoes or maybe I got these from GPS a lot as well. Speaking of Noda, they made this bat armory, I do believe. N-O-T-T-A-A, -A, I think is how they spelled it this time. They're always kind of changing up the spelling of their name for their various unlicensed products, probably to avoid copyright stuff. So this thing is great, has little LEDs in it. So you can still find these online. They're always gonna be secondhand at this point, but I think a lot of people have had stock that they've kind of kept. So you probably can get a brand new one, but it's just not straight from the manufacturer. This Alfred, is a combination of a couple different things. So we've got a John Wick body and jacket. And I actually unstitched the vest and swapped the shirt out. Cause you know, John Wick had the really dark blue, almost black looking shirt. The vest is actually like sewn onto it, I believe. So, you know, I had to undo it and then re-sew it. And then the black coat is from GPS lot. It's a little puffy up here cause it's wired, you know, again, happy in, with it in my display. The head I got from eBay. There's an eBay seller that has a ton of action figure heads. I think their name is like All Good 777. They're in China, very reliable. I order a ton of stuff from them. I always get it in a pretty timely manner. This came blank. It was like a kind of a very pinkish flesh color. So this is something that I painted entirely myself. We'll see. The foreground lighting isn't great here because I've got this on, but very fun to paint Michael Kine. His head was the size of a tangerine. Moving on to Lucius Fox, or Lucius, as Alfred calls him in the movie. This is on a Mixmax body. Uh, I've used those on the channel before. They were from a company, I believe, called Body Foo. They don't seem to make these anymore. I think if they did another run, they'd make a ton of money. 
The shoes are from a Noda Logan figure. The clothing is all GPS lot. I believe the shirt is a Mezco Joker. I think I made the sleeves for him because this was a short sleeve shirt. I think I had two of them or I cut a piece of the back and made the sleeves underneath for him. The jacket is from GPS lot. It's this really shiny kind of like almost satiny material. And I didn't have anything else I could really pair it with. And I was like, I was hanging on to it for something and I realized that he would be a good candidate for it. So the the, the pants are from the Loki TVA outfit that I mentioned that I used for Bruce's shirt. It came with a tie, which is like this kind of multicolored earth tone tie. I turned it into a bow tie by just basically taking it, tying a little knot in it, pulling it super tight and then cutting it. And then the head is also from All Good 777. Again, it came blank in a kind of a pinkish flesh color. So that's fully painted by me. Very happy with how this one turned out. I did have to paint the hands and the wrist pegs because unfortunately, Nobody makes a black body other than like the new V Toys one that just came out, but that one already sold out, I think so. And that's a muscular one. I, I just wanted a kind of a regular one. Now, a lot of these companies that make these bodies are overseas in China where there is not really a black population, I don't think. So unfortunately, that's one of the main oversights that you see with all these companies is all just like white people. So if you want anyone who's not just like a white dude, you gotta make your own. Uh, hopefully that we see that change. You know, there's been a few little trickles of, of positive momentum there, but you know, I think we'd all like more cool stuff on our shelves. It is representative of not just one group of people. Yeah, I'm not picking this guy up because this pose is really hard to get him into on this little stool. The stool is from a McFarlane Sam and Twitch set. I got just the stool loose at a local toy store for like a couple bucks. So I'm always looking for little props like that. I was very happy to find that. And then we have Catwoman, Selena Kyle. She is on a Mafex bat pod. I did have the Mattel one. I still have it. It's got a Batman on it. And this is just so superior. Like if you're, if you're looking for one of these, people already charge a crazy amount for the Mattel one. Just upgrade to the, the Mafex. It's so much better. And it, it I mean, the, the detailing, the materials, everything is just like way better. And it's not all that much more expensive than the Mattel one at this point. So it's totally worth the difference. This is a stock Soap Studios Selena Kyle on here. I haven't done anything to her other than pose her up. This, I'll be honest, is a very difficult figure to pose and move around because her outfit is so tight. The soft goods are incredible on this. I mean, it's really well done, but yeah, it's just a very thin kind of fragile feeling body and it's kind of hard to move around. But once you get it in a pose and leave it there, I think it looks pretty good. The head on this one, I've contemplated repainting before, but the longer it's on my shelf, the better it looks. And I honestly feel like it's probably the best Soap Studios has done. Definitely the best in, in the their Dark Knight line. All right, moving on to the second shelf here. We've got a Soap Studio Ninja 2-pack Bruce Wayne. I can say for this, what I can say about all of the Soap Studio figures is that the soft goods are incredibly well done. Uh, the body is trash. <laughs> so this is the thing where like the hands want to pop off. The ankles are like, they have this split cut in them and they're super weak. So, you know, I've made this joke on the channel before, but anytime you have like a stand that comes with a figure like this, not like an articulated action pose stand, but just one that's like, here, this is how you make them stand up. You know, there's problems because they don't trust that their own figure can stand on its own two feet. <laughs> The only thing I did on this was I swapped out the neck and the head. So this is a head from Action Figure Customs on eBay and Instagram under the same name. I believe this is a shrink of a Hot Toys head. Came flesh colored, I painted it myself and I added a piece of thread for that little kind of curl that Bruce gets, so. Now this one, am I saying it right, Mr. Raz Al Ghul? I was very excited to make this one. I love this version of the character. I love Batman Begins, and uh, this was a ton of fun to make. So what this is, the company who made the Mix Max bodies, Body Food, they made these suited bodies as well. And you could get just like this really nicely tailored, you know, three piece suit over a Mix Max body. I missed the boat on these when they were new. So when I'm able to track them down there, they're on eBay and stuff like that. Um, but I got one of those three piece suits. I put a black shirt on them. Those are Mezco Gomez secret agent hands. And then the cane is actually from the Mafex Bruce Wayne. The head is also from that eBay seller, All Good 777. I painted this myself. And then the scarf. So you know when you order something as a gift on Amazon and you can have it gift wrapped and they put it in those green drawstring bags. 
this is a piece of the drawstring. You know, I keep a lot of stuff. I'm not a hoarder by any means, but I do hang on to things that I think could be useful later. And I had one of those bags because I thought maybe the fabric would come in handy at some point. And sure enough, boom. So this was a perfect little scaled down scarf. I put a wire in it so that it would hold its shape a little better. And he just maintains that very distinguished Ra's al Ghul look. And while that Ra's al Ghul is out of the way, I do want to show you this one here in the back because this figure is such a pain to move. If I move it, it's going to fall over. Uh, this is the Soap Studios Ra's al Ghul that comes with the Bruce Wayne that's to the left there that I just showed you. Again, excellent soft goods, really nice little armor pieces and stuff, cool accessories. It comes with two heads. You've got the ninja version and then you've got the plain Ra's al Ghul, which is a bad head sculpt, just like the Bruce Wayne was. So that's why I swapped the heads on these. But as a ninja version, it looks great. Kind of represents both of them on the shelf, but I got that two pack from Big Bad Toy Store for like, I think it was 40% off. They just couldn't really move those things. Soap Studios, I do want to say they have improved since then. So uh, something to keep in mind. While we're back there to the left in the center, that is the first night out, Mafex Bruce. Yeah, I wanted to take Bane off the shelf for a closer look because this one had a lot of work going into it. And uh, the lighting back there wasn't strong enough to show you all that. So. Bane is on a GW Toys body. I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but I painted the arms and the chest and everything with the same skin texture that I painted the head with. I thought about trying to go seamless with this and using a um, bison body, but for my collection, that scale was just too small because I wanted to keep it in Mezco scale. The vest was from 3D Marine on Instagram. I got it from his Etsy. I don't remember the name of it because he goes by 3D Marine and like 112 Custom or something like that. Uh, but if you look him up, you should be able to find him. Now the issue with this, so the, the vest is 3D printed and I painted it myself. It just came black. So I, as you can see, I put a lot of detail in it. In it. I painted all these individual parts. It was very meticulous. I used some thread to make these little tassel tie things that he has painted the back as well. Oh, I also gave him the scar on the back of his neck that you see in the film. The issue with this vest is that it just slips on the top and it didn't have like anything to connect it. So I had to use some craft foam and paint it and just glue it to kind of bridge the gap. So that was a bit disappointing. I, I do wish that he would have set it up to where it had more of a connector because you do have to specify what size body you're using when you order them from him. So I feel like that wouldn't have been too difficult to do, but here we are. Uh, but I'm happy with it, especially, you know, you only see from the front anyway, but I think this works. I made the wrist brace thing. This is out of that same craft foam that I put a clear varnish on so that it has some kind of like leather shiny look. And then I made these buckles on it out of paper clips. The empty cowl is from the Soap Studios Dark Knight Batman. I thought it was perfect for him to hold in his hand. The pants are from GPS lot. The knee pads are from a Netflix Mezco Daredevil. I painted the pants. This green is paint and this green is paint. And I just, you know, very carefully did it. And then these boots are from a Netflix Daredevil. I did. The head is again from the same All Good 777. I very meticulously painted this. This figure took a long time, mainly because of the vest and the head. Like the head just has a lot of intricate little details that you gotta get right. And, uh, you know, you don't want it to run off into other areas. So you're trying to color inside the lines pretty much. There's like some little brass bits in there too that you can see. So yeah, this, this one took a while and uh, had to be very meticulous with, but it was a lot of fun. We're gonna keep it out of the display for a minute here so I can show you this Officer John Blake that I made. If you watch my channel, you know that I love customs like this that are just like a regular real world type of character. Start with the head. Another blank from that All Good 777 on eBay. The body is a Mix Max. The jacket is from GPS Lot. I had a Mattel John Blake figure and I just cut the badges off, glued them onto this as well as his radio. And then the cord is actually a piece of the thinnest action figure packaging wire that I could find that I had. And I wound it super tight around a, a very small sculpting tool and that gives us the cord for the walkie talkie. The belt is from a NECA Terminator T-1000. Pants and shirt are from a Mezco John Wick. The shoes are also from a NECA Terminator police officer. The turtleneck is just a piece of sleeve, I think from a black t-shirt that I had for an action figure that I just cut and turned into a turtleneck. Very pleased with how this guy turned out. This is one of my favorite 
customs I think I've made just because I, I love how simple it is, but it's effective. All right, continuing our in-shelf tour, we've got the Movie Masters bat signal in the back there next to John Blake. Uh, you will have seen my review of the Felix Toys Joker on my channel. If not, it's there. Feel free to go check it out. It's a phenomenal figure. If you can track one down, I highly recommend it. Uh, previously, I had a bank robber Joker from Soap Studios in there with a custom head on it. I have since replaced it, obviously, and that body and suit are going to be donated to some other custom that I'm going to do down the line. Uh, Harvey Dent. Harvey, Harvey, Harvey Dent. This was the Soap Studios Two-Face. Again, great soft goods, terrible head sculpt. So what I did was use a head from Action Figure Customs. Uh, it's a shrink of the Hot Toys head, I believe. It's a really great sculpt, and I had probably the most fun I've ever had painting a head doing this. Painted it, you know, like a real person first. There's a lot of skin tones and different textures and, and whatnot in there to make it look more believable and realistic. A little bit of a five o'clock shadow. And then I painted the charred side, and that was just too much fun. Everything else is just the stock Soap Studio version. I did have to kind of tape his jacket down because it rides up right here. You know, the accessories he came with are great. So yeah, again, you know, if you can get Soap Studio stuff and clean it up a little bit, put it in a vanilla pose, it looks phenomenal. All right, now to my Batman. This one has been getting some buzz as of late because a couple of newfound buddies on Instagram took to it and are making their own and they're really taking this thing up to the next level. So I'll post links to their pages in the description below if you want to check out what they've done. One is Perfect 112 Customs, who's actually here on YouTube as well. And the other one, I'm not exactly sure how to say the name of it, but again, I'll have it in a link in the description below. So this is the Soap Studio Batman bone stock with the exception of the head. I took a Mafex Dark Knight 3.0 head. I repainted the face. I believe I added a gloss varnish to the eyes. Then I had to take a spacer and put it in the base of the neck because the original one sat too low. And so that's been popped up a bit. Now, what Perfect 112 Customs has done is he actually removed what they call a fat suit that's on this underneath. They'll put on figures sometimes, you see it more often in, in Hot Toys in like one six scale figures, but they'll put a padded suit underneath. So you can see how it's really like kind of, I don't wanna say puffing out, but the suit isn't loose in any places. It maintains like a, a tight fit to Batman. That's because there's a little bit of padding underneath. And so what he did was this chest piece is a separate overlay took that off and he cut a little bit around the, the neck area and actually just pulled that whole body out and the fat suit off of it, put the body back in. Now, the other guy on Instagram, he actually put it on a whole new body and he had to dremel it down quite a bit because it was too like muscular to fit the suit on. But once he did, it looked pretty phenomenal. So you can go either route. It also alleviates the problem of the arms not being able to go straight down because it takes the padding out from under the armpits there. He also just recently, I saw this morning, he cut out these little like vent areas in the gauntlets, these little depressed spots, and it just adds that much more dimension. So I definitely want to do that to mine now. I'm so, I have so many customs that I'm trying to do and so many videos I want to make that for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the kind of museum pose setup that I have here. But if you want yours to be more articulated and, and just be able to do a lot of cool stuff with it for photography and whatnot, then I highly recommend checking out what they did. But again, I mean, from a soft goods perspective, I think this Batman is just phenomenal. And it's the only one we have in this scale that is like this. I'm still very pleased with this figure with just a head swap and, and fixing the height issue. The other thing is fixing the height issue with the neck does make it more in scale with Mezco and it's the same size as this Ledger Joker now. I think if you kept the Soap Studios body and just removed the fat suit to fix the neck problem, you'd have a shorter Batman. So that is something to keep in mind. It'd be a little more toward like a Mafex scale otherwise. So that'll conclude the tour of my custom Dark Knight trilogy display and figures. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know the drill. Please hit the like button. That helps the video get seen. And I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Come along as I show off cool stuff that I've made, as I build cool stuff on the channel. Dioramas, figures, cool vehicles to go with them. I do want to take a brief second to talk about my graphic novel, High Crimes. This is a book I did with writer Chris Sabella. This trade paperback is out through Image Comics. It is kind of Breaking Bad meets Cliffhanger. It's about a woman who was an Olympic snowboarder who lost it all due to a drug scandal. So she ends up as a climbing guide in the Himalayas with a kind of Walter White type Jesse Pinkman partnership. And the two of them have a side racket where when they find a dead body up on the mountain, they strip the personal effects and cut off one of the hands. Then they pay off somebody in town to fingerprint it. And then they basically extort the family for a retrieval fee because 
once you're frozen and dead up on Everest, you're just up there, right? So they say, hey, we'll bring them back for you, but it costs X amount of money. One of the bodies that they find near the summit of Everest happens to be that of a government agent who was on the run. So, so when his prints are scanned, it alerts some very bad people and it all hits the fan. And then we see a thrilling cat and mouse game through the streets of Kathmandu and up into the Himalayas. Very proud of this book. It was kind of our first foray into mainstream comics. It was nominated for a couple Eisners. I would love for y'all to check it out. So that's gonna do it for this video. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.